Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, I am so honored and happy to share with you my featured guest today, my friend, Dr. Nelly Farnudi Zahiri. And I'd like to introduce you. And first, hi, Nelly June. (laughs) All right. Um, Hi, Dr. Nelly is a licensed clinical psychologist with more than 20 years experience serving the Iranian American community locally and globally. She's the executive director of the Global Education Institute and the author of Peace Parenting Essentials as an SEL parenting curriculum, a keynote speaker and school mental health advocate for multi Uh, multicultural families in her community. Dr. Nelly is also the founder of Multimedia International Center for Peace Learning. And she's been not only a keynote speaker, she's done podcasts, she had her own show, and done a lot of conscious parenting. So Dr. Nelly says, what makes me is that I'm a first generation immigrant from Iran, born in Kansas and raised in California. And I like to say I was born in Iran and grew up here in California as well. So Dr. Nelly, welcome to the Real Talk show with Lisa. Oh, thank you so much, Lisa. It's an honor to be on uh, Healing Within a Live Talk with you. Uh, and what um, important time in history to have these uh, conversations today. So thank you. I believe this is my first talk uh, since the uh, women's revolution in Iran. So I'm honored to uh, get real and pour my heart out. Exactly. Well, for those who are not familiar, I'd like to share just a little bit. Uh, It's been four weeks now that the world has been witnessing this incredible courage of women, especially women from Iran, as the brutal killing, uh, after the brutal killing of Mahsa Amini. And for those who don't know, it was on September 16, 2022, that Mahsa Amini, a 22-year-old woman from Saqqaz in uh, Iran's Providence, which is the Kurdistan Providence, died in a Tehran hospital. Three days earlier, she had been arrested by Iran's gardens uh, patrol, or what we call morality police, and for wearing her hijab improperly that fell off her head. And after the beating in the uh, in the car, she was beaten inside the police van, and taking her to the detention center. So in a way, the protests are different because her death has started a rally around the world, not only in Iran, as so many women have stood up and they're speaking. It's brought the people across the country together. But this time, it's all the young women and someone in the Persian radio station, Nelly June, they were saying that these are most of the girls grew up in this regime. And now it is this, the movement has become globally. I mean, we're seeing them stand up in all over the country. Nelly, let's talk about Zan Zendigi Ozidi. That's right. Women, life, freedom. Correct. That seems to be what uh, the young women and men in Iran are seeking. Uh, It's hard to have a conversation about this without getting emotional. Um, It's been really hard for me to even find courage to get on camera about this. 
Um, so bear with me <laughs> as I do my best to try and say um, my piece and uh, to, to let you know what, what's been happening on my end, at least, you know, here in the U.S. and Los Angeles right. amongst, um, you know, some of my clients, families that I work with, my own family, my own daughters and son and husband and so forth. So uh, you're right. This uh, uprise has been one that has touched many, many souls in many, many different profound ways. And it is a revolution. Um, we are in the midst of one of the first women's revolution in the history of the world. And so um, to reflect on that, it takes a minute for women uh, all over the world, as well as men, who have been thirsty for equal rights, equality, equanimity, um, to, to, to be able to take those right steps towards bringing more justice um, and, and just the continuation of the Me Too movement that we witnessed um, a couple years ago. I think um, we're seeing sort of this evolution, this full circle women in Iran with this very rich heritage for knowing what uh, peace really is, because uh, as uh, you know, some of your viewers are familiar with, and maybe some are not, Cyrus Cylinder is the very first uh, Declaration of Human Rights, right. which sits at the UN currently. And, um, and that's, you know, the reason why the name Cyrus is very popular around the world nowadays. <laughs> um, and uh, I think we honor that type of leadership when the focus of leadership is to bring equality to the people of uh, nations. Um, but back to women's revolution um, and their intent, the, these young ladies, these young, brave, courageous women yes. who are on the streets fighting and giving their lives fearlessly exactly. is uh, so encouraging and at the same time heartbreaking because these young girls, they could be my daughter. My daughter just turned 15 yesterday and she um, has been asking questions about this, this revolution and she wants to know um, why is the government, the, the people who are in power to protect, to right. serve, to bring peace and justice to a country. Why are they killing these innocent young women who are asking for freedom mm. or freedom of expression? And um, it's hard. It's hard to uh, digest that, you know, on so many different levels. I think intergenerationally, interculturally, I think as um, as we reflect on what are the needs of the young women today in Iran, their basic needs, they just want to have options and choice to choose. You know, do I want to cover my head? Or do I want to wear, you know, the, the hijab or not? Or can I choose not to? Uh, and that's a basic human right. You know, I, I think we saw with, um, you know, um, uh, the athlete who competed, uh, the, the rock climber athlete. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I can't think of her name, uh, but I saw posts on her. Uh, she uh, decided to compete uh, without the hijab. Yeah. yeah. And she was greeted with such tremendous love admiration and respect early morning when she returned back to Iran. And so the, the young generation is asking the government to create space so that they can have this freedom of expression. They can have always this, this choice. So, you know, what we can do uh, in diaspora you know, the, the women and men who are out and not fighting on the streets is to raise awareness, to reach out to people, influential people, people in power, 
to to make those calls you know i think um we come from a place in the, the opportunities the liberty to democracy is vast so if you have the option or opportunity to raise awareness to talk to speak to to make um certain decisions that will bring more justice and peace for those who don't have a voice, can't voice their opinion, then I think it's uh, your social duty and responsibility to do so. And exactly. so you're doing this and, and so are millions and millions of influencers and people in media and a lot of people with big voices have uh, done this continuously. Mm -hmm. So I hope it continues. I hope it's uh, going to take over the world until those young girls so have too. their freedom. Well, you know, for so many, uh, we come from our, our heritage is Iranian. We come from that country. And for those who don't know, I mean, it's like they're surprised of how is this happening, thinking that Iran is such a repressed uh, country or like someone even said, I mean, this is it's not understanding our culture that how much of the women within our country and of course the men and everything that are highly educated you know there are so many educated women as a matter of fact if i recall your mom was one of the first leaders in uh stepping out and uh for the cause and for a rally for the women's rights and everything was it not many many years ago uh, uh, yeah ever since i was a uh, young elementary school girl i remember mom being in the front line of women's rights movement and exactly. fighting for women's rights and and sometimes you know uh, coming home with uh, you know protests like banners and signs so so i grew up <laughs> with this uh a very courageous, brave, and strong uh, mom who has advocated for women's rights for, for all my life. Exactly. Um, and in a way, because of her feminism and her um, just, ex you know, laser focus, being laser focused on her um, feminism and her uh, decisions and work, um, I was a little like turned off by mm -hmm. feminism it, in, in a sense that. I thought, you know, it was a little too extreme for my taste. <laughs> now, growing up, um, you know, I went through different stages and I, I have made full circle to now being one of the biggest feminists and, and knowing that, OK, so just because, you know, I like to do my hair and wear makeup, that doesn't make me an anti-feminist. Exactly. Being a feminist means that you believe in equal rights and and uh, you fight for equality and uh, equanimity and justice for men and women. And right. I have some of the strongest feminists in my experience have been men. You know, my dad was a feminist. My dad was a huge feminist and fought uh, step by step Advocate alongside of my mom. And so to see the young men today on the street today in Iran who are feminists and proud of it and fighting for their sisters and their mothers and the rights of uh, their, their girlfriends, their wives, their, their, their daughters, is I think that's part of the biggest uh, piece that brings me joy and hope to see that this is not just women in the front line as my mom fought you know, 50 years ago, but everyone who's joining force and saying enough is enough. We need to have equal rights. Right. And that's just, it's non-negotiable, you know? So, right. and people are willing to die for this. People are dying every day for this, for this mission. So that's, uh, I think, the new sort of take in history. That this you know, this has revolution. become bigger than the Me Too movement because now it's become globally saying, yeah. I'm standing by you. I am standing with you. I yeah. am walking with you. It's not about me. It's us. Yes, yes. And the but, you know, Lisa, June, I have to say, I'm a little disappointed in the women's rights organization uh, who are not, who are missing, who are missing, 
we've had like so many protests and thousands and thousands of Iranian Americans and you know some of friends from the community are joining but the women's rights organizations the big ones uh, I haven't seen any signs or any presence have you no I have not and that's what I was going to mention not only women's I mean uh Meghan Markle showed support by wearing uh the shirt yes. Zan Zendegi uh, Zan Ozadi. Zendegi Ozadi. Uh, and, and in Farsi, and that was beautiful. Uh, and that that in itself can be very positive or negative, but the organizations, women's rights organizations, organizations that are like um, e-women, uh, seroptimists, yeah. those women, even some leaders in our community in yeah. America that they say in support of a woman and women's right, even they have been silent. So this silence, I don't know what it is. Is it political or is it because it was an Iranian and they don't want, it's like safeguarding their name, but it's- regard, know, but it, regard, Regardless, I think all of us who are active, I'm uh, involved with the American Psychological Association. I think any organization, I know you're very involved with the right. many organizations. So we need to push and press, press, press those uh, envelopes and and demand it ask it to for them to uh, you know press release a letter uh, support online you know whatever it takes so that this becomes us and not just a, a smaller sector right. of uh, you know our, our community so so those are things that we can do because many times, you know, I have uh, some women here or, you know, some women who are bicultural say, well, what can we do? It's not like, you know, we can do anything. The, the women who are fighting or the men who are fighting on the streets, they're, they're the ones. And that's true. They're 100 percent leading this revolution. But and we can also support by uh, all these many ways of, um, you know, advocating and raising awareness and writing to these organizations and demanding their presence and and also invite them to future protests and rallies. I think that would be nice. So in a way, what we are bringing, as you're saying, is awareness. And yet this organization is going to turn around and say, but what's in it for me? I mean, well, not what's in it for me, but but that's in that country why here because even the media in america it took a long time for them to come on board or even mention it talk about it i mean berlin we had eighty thousand uh people come into the streets in berlin in uk in europe all over even middle east they have stood up and yet here in america which is one of the leading countries that has a thick is a bigger voice and we're doing it now seattle has canada has started long time ago and now los angeles stood up so if we and you know thank god for social media because all it takes is, is people influencers with big following right. to to post and repost and repost those news clips so that Absolutely. everyone is aware because news is kind of you know it's got its cycle and sometimes it dies down but yes. it's just astonishing to me and by the way tomorrow is the 40th uh, chehelome mahsa amini okay and so my understanding is there's going to be a huge um sort of protest rally in iran because okay. you know as you know chile or uh, you know of the 40th course. is a big um thing right it's event yeah so 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 just uh, to reiterate the importance the significance of organizations just being attuned all it takes is that attunement mm. so that we are seeing the young people we are soothing advocating promoting and supporting them because that's all they need they don't need a foreign government to uh, do their work, that the people of Iran are doing the work. So all they need is support. And the least we can do is to have it on every news station, every 
media outlet and to raise awareness that this is happening. Look, we need to see that the young women and men in Iran are done, are fed up. They want freedom. They want peace. They want a better life. They want a better future. And they're willing to die for it. They're dying. Every day they're dying. Every day more than, uh, you know, several hundred uh, youngsters are, 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 you know, my kids, age, teenagers, are uh, taken to prison, are beaten up, are killed. Right. So that's, I mean, Sharif, what happened at Sharif University, had this happened at Stanford, Harvard, MIT, any of these universities, the whole world would have been doing something about it. And so why are we not, you know, I, I think those are the big questions we have to ask ourselves as the leaders of the free world. Exactly, because this is about humanity now. It's not about what country, it's not about man, woman, or anything. Right now, this has become, globally, it's about humanity. And I want to bring it back to your not only you as a leader, not only me as a leader or coming on social media, speaking about this, because I've been mentioning this over and over. I've been sharing, I've been standing up because a part of everything that I'm doing on the movement, the power of the she that is going to be one of the books collaborative I'm starting is how do I, how do we show up? How do we stand up? How do we speak up? together it's togetherness and your book the peace parenting essentials i think it's so essentials the five c's that you're talking about children how to bring up children how to be a parenting sometimes we have to learn how to do the five c's within ourselves having yeah. that compassion Correct. For each other. It, 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 it's an inside out process, uh, Lisa. And what we know about um, sort of the science of attachment and secure attachment parenting, you know, raising children who experience secure attachment and have really good mental health right. is that it is an inside out process. So you're correct. The self-compassion, how I um, honor and respect and value uh, the she-ness, so as women, you know, as moms, we have this feminine power, right? And that's what these young women on the streets are connected to because this new generation is a conscious generation. They yes. know, they're aware. Do you know what my daughter said to me yesterday was her 15th birthday? And we were having a conversation. Thank you. We were having a conversation uh, and she looks at me and she says, mom, Sometimes you go too deep and you're too judgy. So this is what the new generation, and she's 100% right, right? They see things, they're honest and they're conscious and they act as mirrors. Mm. They're reflecting, you know, this is who you are, mom. And so as a conscious parent, you need to, or as a conscious leader, you know, if we had conscious leadership, they would take a moment, they would pause, they would create space for these young women and men who are trying to say, we need more freedom. Mm -hmm. We need space to show up and, and we need it for our needs to be met. And that's what you do. You know, the, the whole, the essence of Peace Parenting Essentials is based on conscious parenting. So what do you do? in that dyadic triadic you know that that bond that relationship you you give yourself space you work from the inside out you honor yourself if you can connect to your deeper no one who has good self compassion is able to hit someone else or beat someone else or kill someone else so no one who has self compassion is able to hurt another human being because they know what it means to love and so if you start there if you start with that the essence of love compassion what it means to show up for yourself 
that then in that headspace, there's no way that to like violence does not exist where you are cultivating kindness, compassion, self-love, self-care. I mean, you know all this. It's right. an inside out process. And the number one predictor of violence is history of violence. And so all those people, you know, yeah, it's, it's a cycle. It's a vicious cycle. So all those people who are killing and hurting, they were probably killed. They were hurt. They uh, are growing up in environments where there is a lot of violence. And so I have compassion for for the, the ones who are also, um, I mean, it's hard to say because how can you have compassion for uh, a violent hard. person, you know? Um, but at the same time, I think um, if if we lean into what it means to uh, practice comp like real compassion is to to get to the level of human suffering, right? To suffer with, and if you are able to understand um, the suffering of everyone, then you know you're you're cultivating deeper compassion. But but it's hard, uh, Lisa June. It's hard because the needs of people, their basic needs and their basic rights are being violated. So, right. you know, uh, it's really hard to be compassionate if your basic needs are violated. And so we got to take care of like basic needs. And, you know, we're not the only, uh, or, or this regime, you know, the Islamic Republic uh, of Iran is not the only Islamic regime in the region. So we need to look at how these other Islamic nations, including Saudi Arabia, including Dubai, including, you know, Italy. all these, yeah, the, the Middle East, right? How are they treating their women? Are they killing the women for not wearing their hijab? Are they imposing their uh, fanatic extreme sort of, you know, belief system onto uh, their people? No, they're not. Uh, and so, I, I don't think this is a religious, you know, battle. It's not a conversation about uh, anti-Islam or, you know, not supporting those who believe in um, the religion Islam or Muslims, uh, but rather, and maybe honestly, I've, I've been thinking about this, that the Muslim countries, honestly, are the best uh, alliances and advocates during these times. Because they can say, listen, like we're we're Muslim, you know, we don't do this. Like we don't torture, we don't hit, we don't kill, we don't commit acts of violence. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's exactly the opposite of what Islam is. Islam is a uh, religion of peace, peace, right? So, so I, I believe um, also their silence right now is detrimental. These countries, like Saudi Arabia and some of these Middle Eastern countries, why are they being quiet? Like, let, let's hear, I mean, I know some women have started, you know, with uh, in Turkey and other uh, neighboring right. countries, there uh, there's an uprise, but let's see more. Let's see that region, like, blast some of these uh, uh, anti, like, uh, you know, um, um, uh, the, the acts of violence, basically. I can't think of the word right now. <laughs> well, you know, the, when I was... Um about the peace learning, you talk about peace learning and how a family, uh, how to parent uh, a better parenting system, the five C's, the, which is the compassion, communication, cooperation, culture, and conservative uh, conservation. conservation. Yeah. Um, even when I have clients, when they come in here and they bring a child for panic and anxiety or tantrums or, or CDs and everything, especially for uh, fears and phobias, those are not normal. Uh, a, a child does not retrieve or go into a fear factor or have panic and anxieties for no good reason. And I usually say, I would rather see you for one session before I start working with the child because it, yes, it's, it's a domino effect of what's happening in the family and even domestic abuse. It happens in the family because a child sees mm -hmm. it, understands it, it happens to them, and then knowingly or unknowingly, they repeat it. And this is what's happening in 
our country right now. I say our country because we're, I mean, we are literally, uh, I, I'm not saying it's home. This is my home, but I was born in Iran as an Armenian. I still have allegiance, not only as an Armenian, but as a Iranian, mm -hmm. um, an American. It's realizing that the injustice that it's happening, the domestic abuse that it's happening, the abusive yeah way they are treating the women who they just want to have their right, a right of choice, a right of speech, a right of being who they are. Like when I remember from the time that I come from, everything was so modernized. The American school a block away from our house and I would look at them. Everybody was dressed in whatever they want. And I was from, um, the Catholic school, which we're, we were in uniforms, and I would always stare at the, um, the kids in the American school and go, oh, one day I want to be just like them, dress just like them, whatever they want. So it's like not realizing we grew up very free and yet suppressed. And now the suppression has gone so far that that's where the movement, it's just like this undercurrent has moved and it's now on an uprise for the big waves that are coming. Yeah. And and as we say here, you know, the horse has left the farm. It, it's it's mm. really like, you know, the, the toothpaste is out of the barn. <laughs> the <toothpaste. laughs> There's twins. no going back. <laughs> There's no going back. Um and I believe that a huge piece of this, it's a sexual revolution. I, I believe because of um, the, this global, you know, globalization or technology and, and the young generation being exposed to such diverse cultural experiences around the globe, I think that they have reached this tipping point where they want freedom. You know, it's, it's similar to what happened here in the 50s and 60s in the U.S., you know, that sexual revolution. And then we had the 70s with the hippies movement, the peace movement, and then the 80s with AIDS and, you know, um, sort of different uh, sexual uh, orientation. Like every, every 10 years, every yeah. decade, there is something happening. Yeah. So, so I believe, um, you know, we are this is not gonna be like a small thing i believe uh this is vast this is um global and it's going to uh hopefully lead to uh these young uh men and women experiencing more um equality as they deserve you know they deserve it they deserve to be free and to have uh that space to express I know you say, listen to the children when they speak, ask them how their day has been, um, how they feel. Um, I usually start with my clients. What are your three challenges of the week? And what was your three wins of the week before we start our sessions? If we want to sum up today's talk about how we can show up, stand up, speak up for one another to support as you and I have, we're, we may not be seeing each other throughout like every month or uh, even few times a week, but we have established a mutually respectful friendship. Um, we are close 30 minutes away in distance and yet we are in contact. It's as if I see your posts, you see my posts. What can I help? What can I do? What can we do to make our life, the families here, the women here, the children here, and allow this voice to carry like a rippling effect onto those who really other than prayer and standing for them uh, what can we do what is so, happening tomorrow in la in america do you know where we can if you do will you do me a favor not only share over here if there's any links by all means send me the links where we can go where we can what we can do uh and then 
let's write, let's move, let's stand up. Yes, 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 to all of that, Lisa. Um, listen, you, you're correct that when you have a secure uh, connection, attachment with a friend, with someone like you and I have, we, we've known each other for years, I trust you. Like I, I have a heart to heart connection with you and, um, and I, uh, I'm proud of you. You know, when I read your posts or look at your work and what you're doing and everything that you're doing, your intent is to empower. Your intent is to help with the evolution, you know, the growth, the uh, families getting better and growing and experiencing better health and mental health and and uh, opportunities and so so all the steps that you're taking is um just you know supportive of the women and men the young women and men in iran who are fighting for freedom so i just want to say that because i don't want you to feel that you're not doing enough and i think um many of my colleagues and conversations i've had over the past few weeks regarding uh, the women's revolution in Iran has been around this. Like, first, let, let's take a moment to to look at everything that we are doing. You mm -hmm. know, the the focus on mental health, even raising your family. This is something I keep saying to moms that when you decide to unplug and not see mm -hmm. the 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 continuous, you know. Mm -hmm traumatic um, images and videos. Um, when you decide to unplug, you're intentional about that and you show up for your children and you go and emotionally support your children and make sure that they're okay and they're feeling grounded and integrated and they have good mental health. That, my friend, is a positive step moving towards peace and freedom. So celebrate those small steps along the way. This is not a race, a sprint, this is a marathon. And so we have to um, collectively come together. I think phone calls are great. I have a lot of mom friends who have uh, decided to make, to actively make a few phone calls a day. And those phone calls can be anywhere from, you know, talking to a friend about this, mm -hmm. uh, Zan Zendegi Ozodi, um, talking about, you know, a protest that they were part of, sharing photos, processing emotions, learning what's happening in Iran, you know, sharing some videos or uh, footage from uh, Iran when they are able to. And uh, again, calling um, medias, calling organizations, associations, you know, places who ha we haven't heard from, uh, frankly, who've been silenced to, to, to say, listen, like, is there anything you can do or can I put you in touch with this person who can or maybe um, uh, get creative with events? I noticed a few fashion shows in Vancouver or around the world, you know, they're doing uh, Zan uh, Zendegi Ozodi events. I noticed uh, some concerts have chosen to raise uh, Harry Styles, you know, he held uh, up the sign of uh, Zan Zendegi Ozadi and and so any opportunity that you can whether it's at your school at work um, you can take those small steps and know that uh, by seeing these courageous women and men in Iran and what they want their needs by seeing them by echoing their voices and and by uh, taking a step towards fighting for freedom that you're doing a good enough job. Like that's part of living a country. You know, I just life. thought of something. Maybe yes. just by th this post, um, because there are many uh, that watch my uh, videos and everything, my live shows that are part of different organizations. And if they would like, uh, we can, I say, I will. Mm -hmm. And maybe you in your community and everything that if they want to have us as speaker, as a program, uh, by all means, I would love to go and speak um, because uh, a month ago for my 3E event, right before our event, they wanted to publicize it in uh, Palm Springs and Palm Desert. And Thalia, the newscaster for 
NBC Palm Desert. Mm -hmm. She invited me on that show. And on that second day, this was brand new. It was brand new that what mm -hmm. happened to uh, Massini in Iran. And we talked about it and she talked about it. Mm -hmm. So this is so um, prom prominent Yes. That tomorrow is 40 days and I can't believe that it's already 40 days. And well, may her soul be in peace and realize that this is an awful thing to say, but because of that tragedy, uh, her, maybe that's what her life on this earth was to bring this message. And this was her calling and truly bless her soul may god cradle her in his arms and and many others who are standing up and uh showing up and speaking up for this and as a woman uh and as a friend as a sister as a aunt whatever thank you nelly june thank you lisa june this was a meaningful conversation and um, I just want to say to the young, courageous women and men in Iran, um, uh, you know, I, I know that your program is in English, uh, so hopefully, you know, I will be doing another segment in Farsi because I do want to speak from my heart and I do want to speak right. directly to you guys. Um, but I do want to share my um, sort of compassion and let you know that I will not sleep, I will not stop until you guys are victorious. And uh, I hope that that victory is very nearby. So keep up the good work. And uh, really, I, I, I'm so proud of you, young gentlemen. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Merci, Nelly June. Merci. Uh, thank you so much. And all our viewers, if you have any comments, please do share. We will put links for you and also links to get in touch with Dr. Nelly and myself. Um, until next week, God bless you and may the universal light surround you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here.